It's time to take off your clothes, enjoy clothes free living, and join us for Naked, Nudist, and Naturist. Welcome to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, the show that celebrates clothes free living for all. I'm your host, Frank Stone. And I'm your correspondent, Lisa Monroe, and I'll be reporting on all things within the Naturist community. So it's time to get naked and join us. And enjoy clothes free living on Naked, Nudist, and Naturists. Well, greetings and welcome in to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, episode 56 today. We are the official podcast for the American Association for Nude Recreation. We are glad that you are with us today. As you know, the pool is ready to go. The hot tub is on full speed. The grill is going with steaks, hamburgers, and hot dogs. We have fruit and vegetables off to the right. We have cold drinks off to the left. Hot tea, hot coffee inside, plenty of towels, plenty of suntan lotion, and even plenty of chairs. Glad you're with us. I see some of you brought desserts along. We're just going to enjoy this next hour together, enjoying the clothes-free living life for all of the right reasons. Well, on today's show, we will have a brief interview with Mitch London. He is the current president of the American Association for Nude Recreation. He has about a month to go in his tenure, and we're going to take a look back at his two years in office, what has gone on, what has he accomplished, what his future plans are, And yes, we will talk about our partnership a little bit that we announced about a week ago. Lisa Monroe will be in here in just a little bit. We'll talk about some listener emails that have come to our attention. And then later in the show, we will play part two of my interview with Dava, a black naturist from Tennessee who was asked the question, Hey, what is going on? Why is naturism so white? Well, we'll talk about that today with Dava, part two of my interview with her. So we thank you for being with us today to enjoy this next hour. Close free if you can. We're close free in the studio at all times. So let's do this. Let's enjoy this next hour together as we enjoy the close free life for all of the right reasons. And again, you are listening to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, episode 56 today. And now let's get to my brief interview with the current president of the American Association for Nude Recreation, the very terrific Mitch London. We are going to head over to Texas again today and talk to the current president of AANR, the American Association for Nude Recreation. He has about a month to go or so in his tenure. He is uh, willfully stepping aside and moving on to other things. We wanted to catch up with him and get a report on his last two years as president, what his future plans are, and of course, to discuss our big announcement that we recently made. So let's welcome to the show the current president of AANR, Mitch London. Good morning, Mitch. How are you today, sir? I am doing really well. Good to have you back here. And of course, uh, next week and the week after, we're going to be uh, airing your interview that we recently did about this dude cooks in the news. So it's going to be a whole bunch of Mitch London over the next three weeks. Nothing wrong with that, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I uh, just finished my 99th episode of this dude cooks in the news. So and I got to think up something really big for the hundredth. I don't know what it's going to be yet. So, yeah, well, I'm sure it's going to be something really good because everything you've done so far on that show that I've seen has been top notch. So just keep on trucking, as they say. That's right. So let's take a look back. You've been president for almost two full years. Looking back, uh, ambivalent, uh, sad, happy. Tell us your thoughts. It's it, in some respects, it's gone by amazingly fast, and other times, it's just like, oh, okay, you know. And that's usually when uh, you know it seems to go slow is when we have a lot of uh, political stuff going on, uh, like we had with the World Naked Bike Ride uh, that we had to deal with, and laws in Florida, and various things like that, that the uh, government affairs team uh, has to deal with on a constant basis in all the legislatures across the country, basically. And so that, it, it, you know, that always just makes things seem to drag, but, you know, it definitely keeps your, uh, your attention going because we have to make sure that we get those taken care of. And in a lot of respects, we did. We got the uh, bike ride uh law that was uh, trying to get passed. We made sure we got, we were able to make sure that that didn't get passed. We got a favorable uh, wording in the Florida bill. Uh, We got the one that was in Hawaii. There was a beach that was clothing optional that they were trying to kind of close down and such. And so we educated the, the, the legislatures uh, in, in stuff. And fortunately for us, it didn't get passed because time ran out for their, their session that year. So 
lot of times it's that's kind of the best result you can hope for in in stuff like that but i'm sure uh you know the government affairs you know chair uh, going forward could certainly give you more information on that and of course whatever comes out later because there's always stuff going on in that uh you know we've had a lot of uh changes we've had changes to our website uh we've had changes to the the base code of the website uh you know uh, George Oberly was a big, huge uh, help in, in putting this new website together a few years ago. Uh, of course, he went on to uh, create the Naturist Hub thing, and, mm -hmm. and that's been huge. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've had a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Uh, our our uh, Women in Nude Recreation Chair, Andy Rogers, has gone out and just done amazing stuff. We've interviewed her several times, and she's right. sent in reports several times about mm -hmm. the the trips that she's made. Yeah. And it's just been huge. I mean, you know, she took, she jumped in on that role and just took off. She did the the Women in Nude Recreation calendar. She created the Women in Nude Recreation dot com website, uh, and we were lucky enough to uh, have that link to our uh, AANR dot com website. So it's been it's been a a wild ride, that's for sure. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's been a whirlwind for you. And you know, going back to the uh, the GAT, the Government Affairs Team. And the work that they've done, you mentioned uh, Wisconsin, Florida, Hawaii. A lot of people ask me in terms of politics, not specific to Anna, but just in general, when is this going to end? And my answer always is absolutely never. And the day you take a day off, the other side gets a day ahead of you. So it really is a nonstop process, isn't it? Oh, it is. Absolutely. Uh, just literally when we recorded this show here just yesterday, our government affairs uh we had a, a raffle that we just had, and it just ended yesterday. And that raised just under, I think, just under $5,000 for the government affairs team. Wow. And it sounds like a lot of money, and it is in one respect, but when it goes to government affairs, if you have to hire a, a lobbyist for something, like we did for the uh, World Naked Bike Ride thing, and we also hired one for the uh, Hawaii that money is gone in in a, in a month. That's a month for one one of the lobbyists, maybe, maybe yeah. a month and a half. You know, yeah. and that's if they're being generous and giving you a discount. <laughs> so you know, it's it's you know, it's a lot of work. The government affairs uh, does so much for the nudists uh, and naturists that you know, without them, we wouldn't be here. I mean, really and truly, we would not be here. And people ask, well, what does my you know my membership give me? And I'm like. It gives you the right to do what you're doing right now, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and to be nude. That is is what we're all about, you know, providing people with, you know, safe places for, for nude recreation. And that's that's the main reason, you know, you don't get, and I did an article in the bulletin a couple of months back called, what did I get for my, you know, my membership? Do I get a free toaster? You know, no, but <laughs> you get, you know, you get the, the, the ability to do this, you know, and, yeah. and to have people. Uh, on a professional level, looking out for your interests in nude recreation. And that yeah. is priceless, really. Yeah. And all of that goes on mostly behind the scenes. Members don't see the day-to-day -day activities, but certainly Tim Mullins and his team, oh, they see it every single day, don't they? Oh, yeah, they do. And it's, yeah. you know, he has a a person in every region, all seven regions, uh, on the, as a government affairs person. And they each report, they have meetings monthly and they report what's been going on and if anything. And then a lot of times they'll do, you know, phone conversations and they'll be in touch with the, uh, the Washington government affairs person that we have, um, uh, that's kind of up there all, all the time, uh, keeping an eye on things. And then if we have to hire other lobbyists, I think Florida, uh, has their own, uh, lobbyists, uh, that okay. they do with Anna Florida. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's a lot, it really is. Well, we appreciate all of the work that you've done. I know it's been a very busy two years, but what are you going to do now? You've got about a month to go. You're going to turn it over to Linda Weber on August 17th, I believe. After volunteering at this presidency of Anner for two years, 25 hours a day minimum, what are you <laughs> going to do with your time now? Wow, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> you know, I've... I recently got promoted at work uh, to a full-time manager position. So that definitely took up a lot more time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'll continue with uh, the Hill Country Nudis as their activities coordinator. Uh, I'm also the new, the new newsletter for the Austin Metal Detecting Club. And I'm also a member of the Capital City Coin Club. So, you know, I've got a few things already going uh, that I've <laughs> yeah. stepped back from, you know, during the past two years uh, so that I could do this. and. Uh, 
you know, I might jump back into those a little bit more and, you know, just kind of take a break from, from the, uh, the higher offices as it were. Cause you know, prior to this, I was the, uh, Anner Southwest president for four years oh, yeah. and then I was in, on their board for several years. So, you know, I've, but I hope at least to, you know, inspire somebody else to want to, you know, jump in and, and, and volunteer for Anner. And maybe I'm inspiring them by their like, boy, that looks great. I want to do it. Or boy, he's doing a crappy job. I think I can do better. You know, yeah. I hope you can do better. I yeah. really do. You know, if I'm not perfect, which I'm not, I hope somebody that is listening or is, you know, seeing what's going on says I can do better. I want the best for Anna. And that's what we all want. So, yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. I, I've had positions before, you know, CEO running things. And, you know, 25 hours a day, like you have been doing, and then I've left. And then the next morning I'll wake up. Okay. I got to do this. I got it. And then I realize, no, I don't have to do any of that. I'm done. I can actually go outside and maybe go for a walk or play golf. <laughs> Big change in how your daily activities will go from now on. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I've heard people say, you know, once they retire, they've never been busier. So I don't know if yeah. that's something to look forward to. It's like, well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm busy now. So what's going to be in 15 years or whatever, you know? Oh boy. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Now we also wanted to mention, you know, we mentioned it on our show last week and Anna was put it on their website as well. We have a partnership going now uh, between Anner, uh, American Association for Nude Recreation, and our podcast, Naked Nudists and Naturists. How do you see this unfolding? I see it as a great thing to in in increase membership, but also awareness about what it is that we do. We are not, lack of a better term, uh, you know, sexually deviant people. It's nude recreation, clothes free living for all the right reasons. How do you see it unfolding? I think it'll be great. Um, you know, there's always uh, people that are like, well, what is this? I don't know about this. And I'm like, well, listen in and find out what it is. And it tells and it gives you more information. Um, so if people, you know, listen in and, and become inspired to join Nude Recreation for the first time, that's fantastic. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, as for the partnership, you know, it's like you do 50 plus shows a year. Uh, you know, so you're you're busy. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and so... Um, you know, uh, I think it'll be a great way to, you know, get out the information about Anner uh, into the public eye, uh, which is a great way to do it because, you know, a lot of times Anner can put out a press release where it usually goes to a handful of, you know, whatever TV stations, radio stations, and maybe they look at it, maybe they don't. But, you know, people love listening to podcasts. You know, that's why right. there's, what, two million of them out there nowadays. And, yeah. and uh, you know, if there's, and how many uh, nudist podcasts out there? There's not that many. Uh, there are some small ones. There's some that are, you know, broadcast a show every now and again. There are some that mainly started one for their club. They just kind of do one for their club. And, and just right. recently they're like, hey, well, what if we put this out for everybody else to listen to there? Yeah. So, you know, but the fact that you do this uh, regularly is is a huge uh, bonus for us that, you know, if we have something coming up, we can say, hey, Frank, let's go and, and talk about such and such coming up. Or Linda can come in and say, hey, we've got a big campaign of something we want to do a membership drive let's talk about that and and so they think this would be a it's a great outlet for that yeah no exactly and that's the reason we jumped into this to begin with i was listening to nature's podcast and there wasn't enough content i was literally listening to every episode of every show three or four times and then it hit me like duh why don't we just do you know we were already doing podcasts here it's part of what we do at our company yeah why don't we just dive in long story short we did here we are uh, partnering uh, with Anna, and we appreciate all of your help as well, Mitch London. And uh, when you wake up the morning of August 18th, what are you going to do? What's the first thing you're going to do? Uh, reach for coffee and go for a walk or what? Uh, uh, yeah, who knows? Um, it, it's hard to say at this point. Yeah. It really is because, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm sure, and I know I'm not going to be, you know, like I'm done, I'm out, you know, I'm, I'm always right, going to be right. part of it, you know, because right. once you're in, you're in, you know, and, yes. and oh, yes. you know, if you do a semi decent job, People are going to want you to hang around and and keep going. Uh, you know, I've already had people ask me, "Hey, Mitch, are you going to run for Anna Southwest trustee?" And I'm like, I don't know right now. I'm so <laughs> I've got so much on my plate. So uh, you know, it's 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 hard to think of the future when you're still working on the present. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's very well said. Well, it's been great to have had you on today, as well as uh, past shows we've done. And again, the next two weeks, we're going to have our discussion about this dude cooks in the nude. We've not heard the last from Mitch London with Anner. We've not heard the last of him on this show. 
and Mitch London, current president of the American Association for Nude Recreation. Thank you for everything, sir. Go out there and have a great close free day. We'll talk again soon. Thanks so much. And I wish the best to the new trustees and to Linda Weber as president. I think it's going to be a great next two years. We'll see how it goes. Very well said. A man of dignity, a man of class, the very terrific current president of the American Association for Nude Recreation, Mitch London. We are not kicking him to the curb yet. He still has about a month to go. But we thank Mitch London for all of his time on today's show. Once again, you are listening to Naked Nudist and Naturist, episode 56, and we are pleased as punch to announce yet again, we'll probably announce it on every show, we are the official podcast for the American Association for Nude Recreation. We've teamed up to increase membership and promote awareness of exactly what we do in the naturist slash nudist slash clothes free lifestyle. I don't know about you, but I hear some music in the background. Could it be? Could it be? Yes, it is. It is time for the one, the only, the terrifically over the top, our naturism correspondent, Lisa Monroe. And here she is, the one and only, the terrifically over the top, the fully clothes free and 100% smiling, the terrific Lisa Monroe. Good morning, Lisa. How are you today? Good morning, Frank. I'm doing terrific. How about you this kind of cloudy day? Yeah, not bad at all. It's always sunny in Florida. Never use the word cloudy. You know better than that. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. The Chamber of Commerce will be after me in no time at all. That's right. <laughs> well, last week was, uh, you know, Nude Recreation Week, ending with Skinny Dipping Day and National Nude Day. How did you do? Did you partake in any way whatsoever? Well, I certainly did uh, fill the brief of being naked mm-hmm. as much as possible. Um, yeah. Didn't make the skinny dipping, unfortunately, yeah. um, but but it was a good week anyway because it's fun to see people have fun. And I understand there were some people who really took advantage of skinny dipping, so that's oh, a good yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, going by Twitter, people around the world engage in this, so it's, it's a great thing. In fact, we have an email coming up in a little bit from a gentleman who participated over in Tampa. We'll get to that in a few minutes. I did want to mention one thing, Lisa. We sometimes get emails or direct messages And I'm of the mindset, if we get a few, there are probably a lot others who have the same thought, they just haven't written in. Why haven't we had on trans people? Why haven't we had on gay people? Uh, Two answers to that. The first one is we don't differentiate. You are what you are. We are what we are. We all all about close free living for all the right reasons. Whatever you designate yourself as, if you're living the nudist, naturist, close free living for all the right reasons life, uh, we'll get you on the show. Having said that, we have had some people who have identified as gay. They just haven't brought it out during the interview, but they are. And we do have some trans folks scheduled. One is already done. We've already done the interview, just a matter of uh, uh, doing it in another month or so. So that's the answer to that. We, we don't differentiate or in any way discriminate. If you're living close free life for all the right reasons, you're eligible to come on the show. Any comments on that? Absolutely. And, and simply, you know, I hate labels. And when we start putting labels on people and saying, why this and why that, we forget the real reason we're here. And not only on then the show, but on the planet, we are all here together. And I think that we need to stop worrying about who and what people are and just, well, not who or what they are, but what they are and worry about who they are. Mm-hmm. Because that's what's important. And if we are true naturists, those clothes come off, we are equals. We are not supposed to be anything but equals. So gender doesn't matter. Lifestyle doesn't matter. Race doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I made the comment just a moment ago, clothes for a living for all the right reasons. If that's you, you're eligible to come on the show. But you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, if you are fully against clothes for a living for all the right reasons, we'll have you on too to get the other side. So we don't discriminate or differentiate, and that's the answer to the question. We have had gay people on the show. We have trans people coming up, so that should put that to rest. And Let's move on. A big week. We made the announcement last week. We are the official podcast of the American Association for Nude Recreation. How are you feeling about that a week later? I think it's still amazing. I'm still kind of in shock because it's such a tremendous organization doing great work for people who just want to enjoy life and 
there's so many barriers and so many obstacles to, you know, people enjoying a close free living that it's nice to know that there's an organization that's fighting for the right for us to do that. Yeah, and, and they certainly do. You know, as you heard just a few moments ago, my interview with Mitch London, they do terrific work. And that's why we are here is to encourage membership and further engagement with closed free living and new recreation and the whole whole shebang, as they say. So we're pleased as punch to be affiliated <laughs> uh, with, yes, uh, we are. <laughs> with Anner and uh, off we go. I want to get to a couple of emails. Uh, one is from Armando. He has written in before. Uh, Good morning, Lisa and Frank. I heard your comments about fewer men going shirtless, and I agree with your observations. I think part of it is skin cancer awareness, and I think part of it's social. My wife and I ride bicycles a lot, and I have started riding on our favorite trail without a shirt just to get the point across. This past Sunday, I saw one other guy doing the same. When I ride with my wife, I just wear my conservative compression shorts and no shirt. During the summer, our trail gets less crowded and later in the morning, so I will ride nude when my wife isn't with me because she is very anti-nudist. And then, Lisa, if you can take over from there. I think we should make a nudist pledge for men to go shirtless as much as possible. I hereby pledge that I will continue to go shirtless camping, biking, boating, and just hanging around the yard. By the way, again, when my wife isn't home, I park one car block in the street and wash the other nude. Then I reverse them and repeat. People can tell I'm shirtless, but no one would ever know I'm nude. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Boy, Absolutely. slick. <laughs> we thank Armando for that. And, you know, a couple of comments, and I mentioned this uh, somewhat last week. I am a naturist, nudist, close free living guy and have been since the day I was born. And I was not consciously aware that fewer men go shirtless. I guess I've made the observation before, but then I let it go. And that includes me. Like, what am I doing here? Why am I suddenly wearing a shirt all of the time just because everybody else is? And I recently, you know, I have to walk from my house to my mailbox to get my mail. It's at, it's at the street. And so I walk down there with no shirt on. And guess what, Lisa? A neighbor came out. Now, I'm pretty <laughs> sure she knows <laughs> about you know, close for a living. I'm sure she's seen me in my pool before, even though I try to be discreet. But she came running out and said, well, a slightly different appearance for you on this fine Monday morning. And I said, you know, you're right. It's hot down here. The heat index is over 100. I'm going shirtless. Now, she had no problem with it, but I'm waiting for the neighbor who has a comment. And maybe they won't make it to me. Maybe they'll make it to a neighbor like, what is he doing down there? He has his shirt off. Well, dang it, guys, if you're a man, get your shirt off and <laughs> keep it off. And then we're still fighting for the right for women to do that as well. Any comments on your end? Well, I think you have a very nosy neighbor uh, for yeah. one thing. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. <laughs> and and yeah. a slightly misguided neighbor. Yeah. But, you know, so many people are all about appearances and about propriety and about proper. And, and their definition never is what we know it should be. You know, they're, they're just too tight and, they, and closed up and, just boring, but um, I think that's pretty terrible. But it's it's awful that you can't walk into your own front yard, especially as a guy, mm -hmm. when it's not illegal or anything for you to do it. But I guess that's what you have to deal with, and I think the pledge is not a bad thing. Yeah, no, I agree. And the way my house is set up and the neighbor's house is set up, when I leave my home, I, I take a sidewalk to get to my driveway. I take the driveway to the street to get the mail. She can see me when I'm in my driveway. She has never come running out before. <laughs> Suddenly this time, no shirt, she comes running out. It's like, it, it, because it's a big deal, because it's something new in the neighborhood, and it shouldn't be a big deal, and it shouldn't be new, should it? No, it should not be a big deal, and she should um, mind her own business, I think, because, again, nothing, nothing to see here other than, you know, a guy yeah. without a shirt on, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that which used to be the norm. When it's 100 degrees, you couldn't find a man with a shirt on. No. Uh, but nowadays, you know, you find him with two shirts on in case one rips during oh, the day. Oh, for heaven's sakes, there might be skin exposed. That would be terrible. Right. <laughs> also, you know, uh, him washing his car in the nude. I don't have permission to say this, so I'll probably get beaten up after the show, but Jennifer used to do that all the time. You know, her <laughs> whole family is naturist. Her mom, her dad, her two brothers herself. And they, she would have her car parked on the side of their house. And she'd wash it in the nude. And kind of like uh, Armando, she had another car blocking it. But come mm -hmm. on, people walking by could see. Sometimes people would stop over. And to her, it was fine and totally normal. 
She wasn't trying to send a message. She just didn't want to get her clothes wet. Totally makes sense. We have things so backward in our minds in the country and the world, don't we? I'm going to get totally soaking wet, so I'll take my clothes off like an intelligent person. And then people mock that, don't they? They certainly do. And, you know, we do have our priorities messed up because if you look at this whole um, artificial intelligence programs where they do writing and stuff for people, I read the other day someone said, why don't you do artificial intelligence for chores like sweeping the floor and washing the dishes and all those kind of things and mm-hmm. and make that part of our life easy so we can be the creative people and not use you to write or to sing or to, to write music or whatever. And so I think we just get our priorities so messed up because we we get so fixated and focused on one idea and then you can't change people's minds. They just yeah. think, oh, if that's what everybody else believes in, I have to believe it. And if you have that kind of mentality going, you're not ever going to change anyone's mind. It will take something drastic to do so. We also got an email from Larry. He said, I keep hearing that naturism is declining in numbers. Well, you wouldn't know it from the turnoff of the 2024 skinny dip at Blind Creek Beach, Fort Pierce, Florida, on Sunday, July 14th. The official count was 677, large range of ages, gender, and race. It was really great to see that. A lot of people are comfortable with being nude. He says they're not necessarily regularly going to traditional nudist clubs, but they are enjoying being nude clothes for a living. And then uh, once you take it from there, the additional comments he sent along. The comments are really interesting. That he, he said, everyone I met was polite and gave an example of a couple next to me were playing music. They made sure to ask me if it was too loud. Someone was setting up a tent, not sure what the proper term is. I saw them check with the people behind me to make sure he wasn't too close to them. And then he goes on and say, I didn't see any littering. I didn't see any garbage. Um, I didn't see any inappropriate behavior. It, he said, it's really hard to describe how great it was to be at such a large, clothes-free event. And that's exactly it. The naturist community is polite and accommodating, and we just get along. And that's the whole point behind all of this. And he uh, wanted us to give a shout-out for the Tampa Bay Free Beaches tampabayfreebeaches.org. They're trying to get a clothing optional beach on the west coast of Florida because right now they don't have a designated nude beach over there. So hats off to Larry and best wishes to tampabayfreebeaches.org. And Lisa, any last comments? We're going to have to head for the hills today, but any last comments before we go? Well, only thing I'd like to say is that I hope everyone has a wonderful naked week. Enjoy uh, being clothes free and enjoying the things that you like to do, and we'll see you next Saturday. Absolutely. Close for a living for all the right reasons. Lisa Monroe, go out there and have a great close-free day and week, and we'll see you next time. You too, Frank. Bye-bye. Thank you. The terrific Lisa Monroe. We thank her for these segments. We thank her for her website work. And her memes that she creates, we can put them up on Twitter. A very valuable member of the team here, Lisa Monroe, and we'll get together with her again on next week's show. Well, you are listening to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, episode 56 today. Believe it or not, our 56th straight week of broadcasting with our 56th straight one-hour show. We give you a brand new show every Saturday morning, 6 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, and hit Spotify right away. From there, it branches out to every podcast platform under the sun or wherever you go. We are just glad that you listen to us every week. We appreciate you more than you know. And one of these days, we'll get to meet every single one of our listeners. How is that for a plan? Well, again, Naked Nudist and Naturist, episode 56. And now let's get to part two of my interview with Dava, a black naturist from Tennessee. Well, I can tell you that when your boyfriend, who was white, took you to his mother's home, she's white, and she was nude, and just answered or stayed in the kitchen that way, that is a bit unusual. I, I don't hear a lot of stories like that. Uh, one of our previous guests calls it ambush nudity. Well, it in that case, it wasn't ambush. It was her home. You walked in. You ambushed her. Right. And everything else. Uh, <laughs> but even at my own home, if I know so, if somebody's coming over or wants to come in, I always throw some clothes on first because I don't know how they're going to react. And especially somebody new like you, she had never met you before. And basically well, in actuality, you know. she didn't know I was coming. Right. It was, right. A, it was a, uh, right. it was a 
spur the moment thing. Yeah. We were driving and he was like, hey, I'm near my mother's house. Right. I need to go pick something up from my mother's house. Would you mind going and going to my mother's house? Right. Oh, no, I don't mind. You know, not thinking your mother is new. Right, right. Not, <laughs> not thinking that. I just was like, oh, yeah, I would love to meet your mother. What are you talking about? Yeah. So we, we get there and it wasn't until we walked in and she was just there stirring soup yeah. new. Yeah. I immediately thought, okay, so what is she going to say? What did, is she going to feel some kind of way about me being a stranger here, yeah. seeing her or her son? Uh, because I, I didn't know anything, right. nothing about nudism on that. Right. You no, know, her son is seeing her nude. What, oh, she's going to freak out. She did. Nothing. Yeah, exactly. She was just, and I, I said, um, you feel okay? Are you okay with me being here? Because, I mean, we don't know each other. Right. And she was like, well, first of all, you know, I've heard a lot about you, all positive things, yeah. you know, so I've been wanting to meet you. Good. Second of all, um, anybody who comes to my house, they know I'm new. Okay. If you're not comfortable with the new body, don't come to my house. Okay. And I was like, really? Yeah. I said, do you have people who won't come? She said, oh, yeah, I have many family members who won't come to my house. Sure. Um, and only see me on holidays when I go to their house. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, real? I mean, I just was fascinated. <laughs> yeah, but but to his credit, your boyfriend did say, oh, by the way, my mom's going to be close free when we walk in. She's going to be new. So right. it, it wasn't a total shock. But then again, it probably was, even though you knew, <laughs> probably going to be naked here, seeing it Still for the though. first time. Yeah, like, Still, though. Because that was the first time... Um, since childhood that I had seen a woman nude, yeah. just in the house nude. Yeah, I, I, I'd never seen that since I had been a child. She stayed that way the whole time, right? The entire time. And walked us walked us to the porch, yeah. was standing on the porch. Oh, wow. About the, all of this, all of this is in my memory because it's just ingrained in my brain yeah. because it was my first introduction. Yeah. Well, that could be a little risky going on your front porch. I mean, I don't know the neighborhood. Really? Crowded? Could anybody? Really? Her? And I said, I asked them when we, when we uh, got back, I was like, hey, you know, what if somebody would have saw your mother mm -hmm. standing on the front porch, you know, saying bye to us? I mean, would they have called the cops? And he was like, he was like, yeah, you know, normally, yes, they would. But my mother's been living here for like 30 years. Everybody knows her. Okay. They're like, oh, you know, she's that's the nude lady. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> they they just let her do what she wants to do. Honestly, that's so, that's how it should be. It shouldn't be a big thing or call the police. Oh yeah, yeah, she's nude all the time. Anyway, let's move on because it's not a big right. deal. It's just normal and natural, which is what we we promote all the time, right? So I mean, I I don't understand the look of nobody wants to see that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, why are you? Oh, no one wants to see your <laughs> new butt. Yeah. No one wants to see your your nude vaginal hair. Oh no, put that away. Yeah. You know, I don't understand that concept. Well, um, um, well, it, it has to do with how many people were raised. You know, nudity equals sex. Therefore, keep it covered when it really doesn't. It doesn't at all. Nudity is just freedom from a lot of things, including clothing, but also free from stress right. and the emotional nonsense. That's what, yes. until, until you do it, until you try it, you don't know that, which you did. Now, out of curiosity, so you're with his mother, she's nude in the kitchen cooking. How long were you there with this nude woman? Um, about a half hour. Okay. We didn't stay really long, okay. but um, long enough. <laughs> well, I think we stayed longer than he intended right. because I was asking a million <laughs> questions and she and I... <laughs> <laughs> she and I ended up chit chatting there and you, you know, so we ended up, you know, actually um good friends. We exchanged some phone numbers and you know, and it, she's like, if you have any more questions, you know, feel free to come on over, you know, bring her over, bring her over, Michael. You know, yeah. you should you should bring her over more often so she can come and be new. Wow. You you did and not like, you did not get nude that day? No. <laughs> okay. No, because it was all new. I wasn't I, I couldn't wrap my brain around. Right, right. It's all new. Being nude in front of a complete stranger. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't um, wrap my brain around. Yeah. It. So she said, but you know what? Um, 
One day we're going to have, well, why don't we, you come over for Thanksgiving and you can come and have new Thanksgiving. Wow. I said, is that a thing? Yeah. She was like, it is at my house. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah. Did you go? Was that, was, did that become a thing for you that year? You know what? What ended up happening was he and I ended up breaking up before Thanksgiving. Oh, oh darn it. And so I didn't mention <laughs> that. And then I, call, then I called her and I said, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to come to New Thanksgiving, yeah. even though I really super want to go. Yeah. She was like, yeah, I'd want to um, introduce you. I'd want you to come and introduce you to, you know, what it's like to just be new. Yeah. He said, but. You know, my son is going to be here, and he's going to be here with his new girlfriend, uh, and I just feel it's some kind of way. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want that. She said, no, I want your first experience to be relaxed and free. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be any stress involved or anything like that, so I don't want you to come. And I was like, okay, I get it. That could have been I just a tad awkward with a new girlfriend. Yeah, a year. lot yeah. of <laughs> We don't need any food fights on Thanksgiving, that's for sure. <laughs> no, especially not any new food fights. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we're talking to uh, Nava this morning uh, from Tennessee. Black naturist, she contacted us. And how did naturism get so white was her question. And now uh, while you and I were talking during the interview, I took a moment to look up the Black Naturist Association. I thought I had heard of it before, but wasn't I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. And during the interview, I found it. And we talked about it for a little bit. Ha since that time, have you had a chance to check them out or find out what they're all about? Yeah, I looked under, um, I, I looked for a website and all I found was an email address and I, I sent an email. So I said, you know, could I get some information? I'm a Black Naturist. Naturist. Can I get some um, information about any um, kind of um, gatherings you guys might have or whatever? Mm -hmm. No response whatsoever. Mm. There was no phone number that I could interact. And then there was there was another um, black black nudist group, but it was very hedonist, mm. where they go on trips and do this um, orgy situation. Oh, and I was oh. just not into that at all. So I was just like, okay, this is not what I'm looking for. Yeah. And so I continued to look, but I couldn't find. And maybe I'm not looking correctly. Maybe you can help me. Well, the one I'm looking at, I have it up here right now, Black Naturists, plural, Black Naturist Association com. That's the one. That's the one that I was that I um, sent an email to, but I didn't get any okay. response at all. Nothing. Now, we had the same issue here. I, I know somebody who knows the people who run that, so I'm going to go through that person say, hey, can you give me a better contact? And uh, if you go to their website, there's a contact us button, and that triggers an email to them allegedly. But if they're not writing back to you or back to I you, know. they're not getting <laughs> it. Or the, but we'll figure that out. But on their website, it says, you know, who are we? Well, Black Naturist Association. They call themselves BNA, Black Naturist Association. Mm -hmm. Is an association that advocates nudity through naturist environments and activities to help promote healthy body images and self-esteem for those in the black community. We are a non-landed affiliate of ANR with members across the United States and a few members residing abroad. And obviously non-landed means they don't have a club or a resort or a building. They just right. every weekend or whenever they get together, it's somewhere else. Uh, they rent out a hall, they go to somebody's home, they travel, whatever they do. Hmm. So, I guess let's just keep continuing. And if I get through to them first, I'll let you know and you do the same because we want to get them involved. We want them on the show and find out what's going oh, on. I would love it. But they're a leg I would love it. legitimate organization. They're, they're with ANR, you know, American Association for Nude Recreation. They are members, a non-landed affiliate is what, what they call themselves, of ANR. So it's a legitimate business. We just need to get them involved more. And uh, the only thing now on their website, you know, body images, uh, healthy body image and self-esteem for those in the black community. Yeah, well, it should be everybody. I mean, eventually right. we'll get there. I mean, we're still fighting that struggle in our country, obviously. But I mean, if, obviously. if, if you came to my home, I'm obviously white. You're obviously black. There would be none of this nonsense. It'd be, you know, come on in, Dava. Let's go and let's head out to the pool. Clothes come off. We would enjoy the rest of the day. I'm guessing if Yay. I did it at your home, it'd be the same thing. So we, yeah. we just need to promote that more often and everywhere, right? Yeah, I, I just think that there should be just a new association, yeah. not black, yeah. not white, 
just everybody involved in this association and not and in and, and you know just kind of inclusive yeah with everyone yeah you know and there is some talk out there i don't know how deep into talks they are but of merging various organizations and i don't know if black naturist and anna are two of them merging i don't know i don't want to put false information out there but at least the conversation is going on hey you're doing this we're doing this over here we're kind of the same why don't we just work together and so there right. might be more of that going on down the road, uh, you, you know, from now as people realize, well, this is kind of silly because eventually you're going to have, uh, you know, only blonde naturist association or those with brunettes, <laughs> brunette, is, uh, brunette naturist association. <laughs> well, that's just there's, the, there, yeah. the, there's a difference. Yeah. Okay. The difference between a, a black association and a blonde association mm -hmm. History. The Black Association has to deal with the history of our bodies being objectified. Okay. And um, I mean, I mean, literally looked at in zoos. Yeah. Like um, like oh, you know, look at how her, how her butt looks. Look at look at how her lips are. Look at look at her nose is so different. You know, uh, in you know, in freak shows and. And um, zoos back in the back in the history of our country, yeah. and um, so it would be a lot different getting over that. Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> than uh, getting over oh I'm blind. If I really wanted to, I could be a redhead. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, once you're brown, you're brown. Yeah, and once you're white, you're white. But uh, my thought was. Once we get past all of that, whoever has to get past it, we just, we are who we are. Let's have, ideally, this this will never happen because of just the way the it's world true. works. We have one nation. I would love, I would love for us to be able to get, and it would take a lot. It would take a lot on both sides. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It would take a lot on both sides. And it can't be just, okay, you know, history was a billion years ago. You know, that was then. This is now. Yeah. You know, so it can't be that. Yeah, no, definitely not. But what, wouldn't it be nice if we just had one organization worldwide, whatever we call it, the Naked People Association, the Nature's Association, whatever we call it. Right. And, just one. And everybody, all in this together. Who, everyone who is people yeah. can join. Yeah, if you're a human being, you can get and in. And interact and have fun together. And yeah. no, no difference between. And I think once Black people come to realize that, you know, you'd have to actually spend time with naked white people yeah. to get an idea of what that is, how how beautiful it can be. Yeah, and you, you know, and, and you've had that experience, and it's yes. basically been really good, right? Very good. I've never, I have never had a negative experience at Rock Haven. Yeah, well, there you go. I mean, it's it's a it's a beautiful place. Grounds always clean, food is great, the pool is great, the people who live there, fantastic group of people. Yeah. You know, I have zero negatives, no no kinds at all. Yeah. Amazing. It really place. is. And that's exactly how it works. So you're we might look to you to be one of the the leaders of everything, you know, one of the more outspoken people, like, hey folks, just do it. And you'd be amazed, you know, we get through all this nonsense and we're not even talking about black white or whatever we're just talking about you know how was your ham sandwich today <laughs> what, yeah. what's your latest book you've read we just have regular conversations like normal human yeah beings. when people come to realize that's what you're talking about and they're not talking about oh you're you're about 70 pounds overweight uh, oh you're yeah. you know you have you have um your breasts are saggy this way or yeah. you have um a stretch marks what is, well, no one cares exactly that's exactly no right. that's right. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, yeah. Well, that's what we need to get to for sure. Now, away from the, the naturist club, in your home, you're a practicing nudist as well, right? I am. Yeah. Um, I'm the only one who practices as a nudist at home. Now, I have noticed, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is, but I have a special needs kid who I have noticed over the past week or so they'll come into my bedroom to tell me something oh mom i saw a spider in the bed in the bathroom and they're completely new okay but i but but i won't i won't say anything about right it. right don't i won't say 
oh, I see you're in nude, you know, blah, 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 because they're, they're autistic. And so a lot, a lot of um things um that we would just say, oh, you know, that's just something she said. It is it's more um irritating to them. Yeah. So um I just say, oh, okay, well, you know, did you kill it? Yeah, I killed it. Oh, okay. <laughs> As if they had come in clothes. But because I want them to be able to relax and feel that, to feel how relaxing it is yeah. to be close free. That's it. In an environment that they feel safe. Yeah. You're in a, here in their home, they feel safe in this environment. So uh, they feel, you know, that's that's why initially they were like, a, no one wants to see that. Please put that away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. you know, and I would say, okay, well, this is my home too. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm going to respect how you feel, but I'm going to be nude in my room. Yeah. In my room is the nude place. Okay. And if you come in here for whatever reason, expect me to be new. Sure. And if you're having an issue with that, then you got to leave my room. Right. Okay. So that's pretty much how it's been until recently. I started noticing that they were feeling a little more free. Yeah. So I don't know what that is really right now. And they can hear me saying this. <laughs> Matter of fact, they just walked past saying, talking about me like I'm not here. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I'm glad to know that they feel comfortable and free. And, you know, cause this is, this is how you are able to start it somewhere you feel comfortable and safe. Yes. That's exactly you know. it. No, we would say they're not doing it around their father. Right. Okay. When their father comes home, they throw on something. Okay. Or a, a robe or something. No, they did not know this was a nude interview until they said, oh, you want me to get your robe? And I was like, no. Right. Right. <laughs> not, not on this show. <laughs> no, I'm nude. He's nude. That's right. We're all nude. That's the show it is. <laughs> So your husband is your husband is not a practicing nudist within the home. He generally stays closed. No, okay. he is not. Okay, that's why I always say he's not a nudist yeah. because I, I feel like if you're not willing to just, he said he would he probably would be if if our rain felt more comfortable with it. My our kid. Okay, or we have a non-binary kid, okay. um, named Rain, mm -hmm. who is not comfortable with. Uh, ha has a history of not being comfortable with nudists. Okay. So we try to respect that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so he said, you know, I don't want to just be walking around, you know, nude, knowing that they don't, that they don't respect, that they don't feel comfortable with that. Right. So, but he said, you know, once, once rain moves out and we're doing the empty nest thing, then it's all nudity all the time. Oh, well, that works. <laughs> that works. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, well, you mentioned you know, when your one kid comes in and says, oh, there's a spider in my room and he's nude, and you don't say anything about the nudity. You just take care of the spider. If you had said something like, hey, 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 you know, throw some pants on, that would have killed nudism, naturism for that kid for a long time, maybe forever, but maybe they never have gotten back to it. So, yeah, it's just we keep saying this over and over. And eventually, everybody will be listening. It might take us, you know, 100 million years, but it is normal. It is natural. And if you just accept it for what we are, then life just moves on and we take care of the spider, <laughs> not the other stuff, right? Yeah, I think my one regret is that I didn't raise my kids that way. Yeah. That if I had raised my kids that way, yeah. then, you know, um, both my kids went through a period of, of body shame of their body yeah. and that I don't think they would have had to deal with that. Yeah. Well, yeah. If I had, yeah. if I had raised them new, I don't think yeah. they would have had to deal with that. Yeah. They, they would have, they would have been free and, and um, comfortable with what they look like. And, you know, as opposed to what other people look like, they, you know, they're just used to it. Yeah. That's my one regret as a mom. Yeah. Well, it, it wasn't on you, but I hear that a lot. And uh, the lady who works here with us, organizing events and uh, I guess for the show, you know, Jennifer, I think, I don't know if you've talked to her oh, before, yeah, but Jennifer. emails back and forth, you know, she was raised. Tell in her the, I said hi. Yeah, I will. A totally close free environment, you know, 
Mom, dad, both brothers, her always nude. Aunts and uncles came over, nude. Grandparents, nude. Everything was nude, nude, nude. She really didn't know any other way. And she said that helped her to grow up 100% confident. She felt confidence throughout her whole youth, her middle school years, her high school years. Now she's, I don't want to give her right. age away, but you know, in her later 20s, 100% confident. I mean, there's just nothing that throws this woman off track. And she gives credit to it for the naturism in her home. You know, we were accepted as who we are. We didn't have to fake it or bob and weave or change or be uncomfortable. We were just who we are. And she is still just who she is. And I had a very similar experience growing up. I was probably the most, one of the most confident kids in the entire baseball league. Every time I'd come up to bat, I'd expect to get a hit. And, you know, some people thought, well, that cocky little kid, he's nine, year old, nine years old, thinking he's going to get a hit. Well, I did because I was confident, not because I was cocky. It just, that was the life we led. And other kids on our street did too. Unbelievable difference, isn't it? When you just accept. And you go it on is. as opposed to, hey, I, yeah. I, I wish I had done it, Yeah, you know, because I really feel like they would be, I don't know if they would be different people, but they, they would have had a different journey yeah. to who they are, yeah. you know, a better, a better, more relaxed journey Sure, but, to who they are. Now, the one who came in close free about the spider, was that recently? Was that one? Very... Oh yeah. That was just a couple of days ago. Okay. Now your kids are older, right? They're not little kids. No, um. My non-binary kid is 19, yeah. um, but they're autistic, so they stay with us. Yeah. And then I have a 31-year-old son who uh, who doesn't live with us. He lives on his own. Okay, so the 19-year-old is the one who came in. Right. Close free, you didn't shoot him down, so now he's probably going to discontinue. Oh, I didn't even mention it. I, it was as if I didn't even notice it. Yeah. Because that's what it should be. That's it. That's, that's it. what it should be. You have definitely caught on. Do you think it was the seeing that uh, ex-boyfriend's mother nude and 100% comfortable and carefree that triggered all this for you? Had, you hadn't even I really do. I really do think she planted a seed yeah. in my brain somehow yeah. that um, made me, uh, you know, I really wish I could do it. Uh, throughout, my entire, um, throughout my entire life, um, I don't know if I would always say, you know how some people say, um, there's something different about me and I don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what that is. And then as they get older, they say, Oh wait, I know what I'm, I'm gay. That's what it is. Sure. I'm gay. Yeah. And now that's, that's kind of how I feel about nudity. Yeah. All my life I've been different from other people <laughs> and I really didn't understand what that was. Yeah. I knew I never, never really wanted to spend a lot of time in clothing. I never appreciated the feeling of clothing. Yeah. If I go go somewhere, yes, I want to look nice and put on something nice. Yeah. But as soon as I get in the house, it's coming it's off. Gone. It's <laughs> gone. It, it's yesterday's news. So, yeah. yeah that's right. um, I'm not comfortable oh. until I'm new. And I've always been that way, and I didn't understand what that was. But then when I came to realize what nudism was, yeah. oh, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. So I always say I've been a nudist all my life. I just didn't know it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, how yeah. how long after? So you see his mother in the nude, cooking, relaxing, clothes free, and loving every second of it, with no hangups. How long after that moment did you have your first nudist naturist experience? Was that a period of years, or was it sooner, or what? Um. No. It was. I think. Um. It might have been years yeah. because. Yeah. Um, because at the time I was staying with my mom. Yeah. And my mom. Um. My mom had a period of time where she uh, presented nude in the house, but it was because she was having an issue at the time mentally. Okay. And that was always uh, a part of it. It was always, um, it was always, okay, this is the only reason why you would be nude in front of me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, so um, when I would come home and go put some clothes on, what's wrong with you? Yeah. You know, so when I would get that, I would say, okay, once I got my own place, that's when. Yeah. When I got my own place for the first time, mm -hmm. me and my cousin uh, got an apartment together, and I was like, okay, well, you know what? Uh, she would come in, and I'd be watching TV. She was like, girl, put some clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> but she wouldn't, you know, 
force me to. Yeah, right, right, exactly. No, go to wipe his clothes around. Yeah. Oh my God, you're killing me. You know. <laughs> uh, uh, the best, uh, probably the best friends I have in life are those who are naturists, not because I recently met them, but even back in college, you talked about the college roommate. Hey, Dava, if you take your clothes off, I'm out of here. I'm getting a new roommate. We were right. always nude in college, and it wasn't a sexual deal. It wasn't a big deal. It just feels so much better with maybe the fan on your face as you're studying or doing research, clothes-free. And See, and that's what's yeah. making me think that it's a difference between my culture and yours. It's got to be. Well, There's something different. But no, there were black people there too, Dava. It, it, it was... Uh, the place where I went to college, uh, literally, not exaggerating or being funny, I think every culture in the world is represented there. It's it's an urban university, oh. and they reach out to everybody from every country. Please come here. And so, uh, you know, Middle Eastern people, yes. Black people, yes. White people, yes. Japanese people, people from China, Australia. All around the world, I saw things for the first time in my life when I went to college. People from India, every culture was represented including in what I just described being nude in college. Now, I'm not saying everybody was naked. It wasn't a naked university, but in my little circle, <laughs> my little circle, you know, we'd walk in, clothes come off. Hey, how you doing? Okay, I got to do some research here. So so you had black friends who were comfortable being nude around you? Absolutely. And have since what? since college. Now, I, I went to a, a high school with about 2,000 people, all white except a, a small handful. Got to college. Okay, now I'm surrounded by everybody except white people. Yeah, absolutely. That's why it struck me as strange when you first said, you know, black people just uh, aren't nudists. It's like, well, my experience is they are. In fact, sometimes they're the leading advocates in, in my little community. They get their clothes off first. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but either way, we just need to come together and just put all of the the nonsense out of the way, whatever the nonsense is, and everybody has nonsense. Everybody has hangups or thoughts, or they were told stuff at one time. Let's forget uh, about right. it. Right, everybody. You know how to do that. You know how to go to a nudist club, lots of white people, some black, you know, whatever, and your clothes come off and you have a good day. You you have learned the art of that. Now we just need everyone to do it, right? I would love it. Yeah. Always good to talk to you. We, we need to do this more often. It's been too long since we the do. last interview. We have a lot of fun together. Uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll, in case you didn't notice, I'll point this out. You're black and I'm white and we have no hangups with each other. It's just amazing how that None. works. Yeah. <laughs> I could, I could see you a friend. There you go. We show up at the club together. We'll be talking all day, sipping iced tea and whatever else we do. Uh, Dava from Tennessee. And we're going to work on the Black Naturist Association to get in touch with you and try to get them on the show here as well and, and promote this not just a place for black naturists to go but that's a good start i guess but a place where black white and everybody else can come together and just enjoy clothes free living as we say for all the right reasons for all the right reasons there you go i love the way you quote us <laughs> okay dava from tennessee thank you again for everything go out there and have a great clothes free day we'll talk again soon all right The very terrific Dava, who identifies herself as a black naturist from Tennessee. We thank her for being on today's show as well as last week's show. It is always great to get the story from somebody else, their perspective, what they go through every single day. And we appreciate Dava for all of her time on the show these uh, last two weeks. Over the next two weeks on episodes 57 and 58, our guest will be, guess who? That's right, Mitch London. Apart from Anna, he also runs the cooking show, This Dude Cooks in the Nude. So the next two weeks, we will feature Mitch London and his cooking show, This Dude Cooks in the Nude. And by the way, during the Dava interview today, Jennifer popped in. She is totally fine with me telling that story about her washing the car. So how about that? Well, you've been listening to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, episode 56 today. We give you a brand new show every Saturday morning at 6 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. Continue to join us. Check us out on our website, nakednudistandnaturist.com, Spotify, Google, Amazon slash Audible, Apple Podcasts, and also on Twitter. You can write us anywhere, anytime, anyplace. And we thank you for being with us today. Plan to join us for every single one of our shows here and have your clothes off when you're listening. We have our clothes off when we're broadcasting, enjoying the naturist life. We celebrate clothes-free living for all. Remember to enjoy being naked and join us again for Naked Nudist and Naturist. 
We drop a brand new show every Saturday morning, so come back and join us. Have your clothes off when you do for Naked, Nudist, and Naturist. Have a great clothes-free day.